Joe Biden had a very, very rough week in terms of physical precariousness. So a clip that went viral over the weekend is at this aforementioned fundraiser held by George Clooney and Barack Obama and Jimmy Kimmel. By the way, I remember a time when the networks would not allow their comedy hosts to involve themselves in these sorts of things, but obviously we're long past that. Jimmy Kimmel is just a prop for the White House at this point. Well, at the very end of this event, Joe Biden is doing this weird thing that all these candidates do where they walk around the stage clapping for themselves, which I don't really understand, and they clap to the crowd and all this, and he freezes up. He appears to freeze up near the end of this to the extent that Barack Obama has to physically take his hand and then start to lead him off the stage. He grabs him around the back to guide him as though they're best buddies, even though in truth, Barack really cannot stand Joe Biden and never could. Here is what that looked like. Okay, so right now he's still okay. But then there he is, he freezes, right? He's just staring out into the audience. Jimmy Kimmel's trying to copy him, but it's obviously awkward. And then Barack reaches over and he grabs his hand and he starts to, and he like reminds him where they're supposed to go. And then Joe Biden, who barely can walk. I mean, Barack Obama still walks like a normal person because Barack Obama is 20 years younger than Joe Biden. But Joe Biden then staggers off the stage being guarded by his ex-president night nurse back to the back to the early bird dinner at the old age home. Okay, so it's a bad look, obviously. And that's the full tape. I mean, what we showed you there is the full tape. And as I say, right before that, he was waving to the crowd, but then he sort of freezes up. Now, this became subject of an enormous number of blowback fact checks from the left-wing media who declared at the behest of the White House that actually, actually, everything was fine. How dare you suggest that he froze up? According to Andrew Bates, who's the White House senior deputy press secretary and bootlicker, quote, fresh off being fact-checked by at least six mainstream outlets for lying about the president with cheap fakes. Now, again, they're using the term fake completely mistakenly here. The clips that we show on the show are actual real footage. What they are claiming is that they are cut too narrowly to make it look as though Joe Biden is freezing up. The problem, of course, is that people can see with their eyes, the president of the United States, that he is diminished in capacity. But Andrew Bates says, Fresh off being fact-checked by at least six mainstream outlets for lying about the president with cheap fakes, Rupert Murdoch's sad little super PAC, the New York Post, is back to disrespecting its readers with an apostrophe in its wrong. And once again, and itself once again, their ethical standards could deal with a little unfreezing. Okay, my dude, let me explain. The thing about the clip that makes it so awkward is that Barack Obama clearly perceives that Joe Biden has frozen. That's what's weird about the clip. It's not just that Joe Biden freezes. It's that Barack Obama so clearly perceives that he has frozen, that he reaches over as you or I would do with a grandparent and takes the president of the United States by the hand in order to get his attention and turn him. And here's the problem. This is like the second time this happened this weekend. So he was at the G7 and there was some sort of parachutist reenactment because it was surrounding Normandy and all of this. And um, and Joe Biden, you can see all the other G7 leaders are standing there and they're watching the parachutist in front of them. Joe Biden is somehow distracted, apparently, by a parachutist who is off to the side. And so he starts randomly talking to the parachutist off to the side. And like, what's he doing? It's so bad that the head of the EU has to turn to him, Ursula von der Leyen, and literally redirect him. So he's like wandering off and talking to this guy who's just packing up his <laughs> parachute. It's so good. George Maloney, who's the head of Italy, literally has to walk over and tell Joe Biden that they're about to take a picture. You can play the whole clip from the beginning. Here we go. So there they are. They're all clapping for the parachutist who's right in front of them. Joe Biden sees another parachutist. He's like packing up his gear and he starts wandering off screen to go and find this other parachutist and talk to him. The parachutist, for what it's worth, literally doesn't even know that Joe Biden is there. He's just there packing up his parachute back into his bag. And Joe Biden starts like randomly mumbling to him. And George Maloney, who's the only relatively popular leader in the G7, maybe the only good leader there, she literally has to go to Joe Biden, find him, turn him around back toward the camera. And then Joe Biden slowly slides on those sunglasses. So he looks like Dark Brandon or whatever the stupid meme is that they're trying to do. Herein lies the problem. We can all see it. We can, and if that wasn't enough for you, over the weekend, he was confronted by some sort of Instagram or a YouTuber at a White House event. And I know you're a typical press guy. You're grabbing me in front of this all this stuff. Uh, and I trust you as far as I throw your phone. I can I have a good arm, man. I'm so I can throw a long way. But my point is this. That doesn't make sense. 
my point is, long pause. I've made very clear to the Israelis. And then he threatens the Israelis, of course, because in the middle of a conflict in Israel and Hamas, we know this president has to have the Dearborn vote, so he threatens the Israelis. This is his shtick right now. Is going to cut off funders? I came because usually you tell me I have a nice suit and you didn't comment on my suit today, so I don't feel a little offended. No, 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 no. Thank you. He says that they'll do a lot if Israel doesn't listen to that. And that, but like, first of all, just mentally incompetent, not with it. It doesn't even, let me just point out, it doesn't make any sense what he is saying. He literally says to the guy, I can trust you as far as I can throw your phone. And I can throw your phone a long way. Cause I'm a, I got a real arm. I used to play baseball for the St. Louis Browns back in the day. Well, if you can throw the phone a really long way, that means you trust him a lot. You idiot. But again, this is like, he is not with it. And that is why every attempt to paint him as something that is not a broken toy at this point is just hilarious. It's just none of it makes any sense. You got Mark Cuban out there trying to defend him by attacking Bill Ackman. He says that he's so consumed with pandering to his Twitter followers, you have lost all objectivity. I'll let you both in on a secret. Both candidates are old, very old. They're both going to have senior moments, misremembers, forget things and have physical frailties. I'll tell you a not so great secret. One is great at sound bites, but also thinks in sound bites. The other is awful at sound bites, but thinks in complete sentences. Hey, first of all, Joe Biden doesn't think in complete sentences unless you count sentences like, I like pie. That is technically a complete sentence, but that is as far as his thoughts go. Secondarily, the real problem with Joe Biden's presidency is not his incompetence. I've mentioned this before. His mental incompetence is simply the icing on the cake of his actual incompetence. He is a terrible president who also happens to be non compos mentis. He happens to have dementia, and that is the icing on the cake of him being unbelievably crappy at his actual job. But they're going to continue to, like, they don't have any other options. As we'll see in a moment, Kamala Harris is still wandering around, speaking in weird crystal platitudes. Here's Jill Biden attempting to, Edith Wilson, this one. Here she is suggesting that Joe is not just effective, He's the most effective because he's old. It's because of his, you should appreciate his age because with his, with his age comes wisdom. There's Jill Biden desperately attempting to prop El Cid on this horse. This election is most certainly not about age. Joe and that other guy are essentially the same age. Let's not be fooled. Joe isn't one of the most effective presidents of our lives in spite of his age. But because of it. Oh, it's because he's a, an old codger who can't keep it together for more than five minutes that and, and has to have a bunch of quick cuts and short videos that he makes for TikTok. It's because of that he is so effective, says actual President Jill Biden. What exciting news. So the media have come up with a new strategy with regard to his age. So one is deny, 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 right? He's totally fine. Don't look at what you're seeing with your eyes or listen to what you're hearing with your ears. Simply feel with your heart and he will be young again. It's like Cocoon. And by the way, Wilford Brimley, I should point out in Cocoon, Wilford Brimley, who's the star of Cocoon, when he made Cocoon, was, I believe, 50. <laughs> I think he was 50 years old when he made Cocoon. Joe Biden is 81 years old. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 